pretty good, wasn't it? Wow, I'm impressed, yeah. <laughs> Did you know, Scarlett, that when you dream in color, that it's only a pigment of your imagination? Pigment of your imagination. That, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad for the first one this morning. Hey, Kathy. You were in Hawaii recently, yeah. and did you know that laughing out loud is forbidden in Hawaii? Oh, we laughed out loud in Hawaii. That's, it's forbidden. Nobody arrested us. Well, you know why it's forbidden? No. Because it's Aloha State. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one? Okay, all right. Hey, Rick, what do you call a fake koi fish? A fake koi. You know, a koi would. I think it's pretty clever. A decoy. That wasn't bad. That's actually intellectually all right, yeah. You know, when you were a kid, did you like to play hide and go seek? But you know, one of the thing is, it's it's hard to find great hide and seek players. Oh. This is good. This person left their Adderall in their Ford Fiesta, and now it's a Ford Focus. (laughs) 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 This guy was doing his best to uh, get rid of his hiking addiction, addiction. But he's not out of the woods yet. <laughs> well, I, I, I like to get your endorphins going either one direction or another. <laughs> and the other is usually the way it ends up. But anyway, so praise the Lord for your word. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this day you've given us. We rejoice in it. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we bless you and thank you for it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17. We're going to be there for a while in our foundation anyway. So somebody read 15, somebody read 16, somebody read 17. 515 Galatians, Galatians. Galatians 515. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of flesh. Verse 17. Okay, Paul was writing to the church at Galatia, and he was telling them, hey folks, you guys are fighting, backbiting, stabbing, talking ugly about one another and you're going to have to get your flesh under control. But now you go back and you think about it. Um, anybody here know any Jewish people? One of the things, have you, have you noticed this? They're very emotional and then they get over it. Just bang and then it's over. You're crazy, I'm going to knock you in the head. How are you doing today? You know I love you, don't you? I mean, just boom, boom, boom. You know, they're pretty emotional people, you know. And so this is the bunch he's talking about here, okay? And, and so he's trying to convince them or tell them that now you have this new way of living. You've got this new life within you. You've got this new understanding, this new way of doing things than you used to do before. Before we used to get up and smack each other around and knock each other down and things. You can't do that anymore. 
Do you know someone Jewish all of a sudden? <laughs> and, and so that's what he was dealing with. Because it, if it, it sees in verse 17, it says, it's because your flesh is arguing or fighting against the newborn spirit man. Okay? And, and I mentioned this earlier. This for the flesh less against the spirit, that's a capital S. That should be a small s. It's your spirit. Your flesh is arguing or fighting against your spirit. Okay? And, and your spirit is fighting against your flesh. Okay? And so, if you understand that then, when you get born again, your spirit man gets born again, but the rest of it doesn't. That's it. So if you, if you understand then, that's why Paul said, uh, or Romans, for instance, renew your mind. And James says, you know, receive the engrafted order with meekness whereby your soul may be saved. And so we've got, we've got this, this new creation in Christ Jesus, that all things are of God, but all body isn't of God yet. Okay? And uh, that better be from God. So anyway... <laughs> So we've got All right, so we've got this problem. When we get born again, this is brand spanking new. All things are of God. It's not a little God and little devil. It's all new. Got it? All right. But this is the only part that's born again. All right. Now, this may be affected to a certain degree, but it's going to show up again because this is still old. So this is new and this is still old. And so we've got this problem here. This wants to do one thing and this wants to do something else. When you're first here, this rules and reigns. The problem is, I know people that have been in here for 30 years and this still is ruling and reigning. Yeah. Which covers most people in the body of Christ. Most people in the body of Christ don't know that they are a spirit, they have a soul, they live in a body. They think it's all the same stuff. If it's all the same stuff, then why did Paul write in 1 Thessalonians, as I, I pray God sanctify you Holy Spirit, soul, and body. He separated it because why? Because there is a separation. And when you learn that separation, you'll be able to understand how you work, how you function, okay? Psychiatrists deal mainly in, in, in this realm right here, okay? And, and they have a thing called a subconscious. They're not sure what that is, but that's what they call it. That's what it is. They just don't know that, okay? And they don't know <laughs> I, uh, when, I, when I was taking my psych class, uh, one of the things that uh, we had to do for a final was, uh, oh, what was it? Oh, yeah. If you're, if you're a manager or an employer of a business, what methodologies would you use to hire personnel? You know? and, and I said I would use the, uh, one of the Minnesota uh, 3M uh, entrance things and then and I said because I am a Christian I'm writing that which and then I explained what a Christian was see because yeah. you can go are you a Christian oh yeah they may not be they may just go to church somewhere you know right. Right. and so then I explained to him what a Christian was and I said I'm approaching it now from the angle of a Christian where I would pray and seek the peace of God and, and you know that sort of thing I, I got to be on that thing from a shrink. Wow. Yeah. They gave you a B? 
Yes, should have gave me an A plus, but you know, it's still a shrink. <laughs> so, uh, oh, anyway, so, so if you understand that you are a spirit being, that is so, so necessary to get if you're ever going to grow in the Lord. Because this old thing right here is running your life and you need to get it under control. And if it's not under control, you need to fix it. Amen. Because you're never going to grow up in the Lord. Amen. You're always going to be He's sucking his thumb. What's up, baby? It's a baby. Years and years of art study that I never took. And I, anyway. You notice I didn't ask her. So anyway, but you know what? People are comfortable there. People are comfortable there. Yeah. And if you're comfortable here, you're going to be biting and devouring one another. Period. You will be doing it. You will be doing it. Yes. How can we be comfortable there if it is such a... Uh, my, my spirit doesn't like that. He gets angry when, when those things happen. Right? Yeah. Whatever, People right? don't have to change it yet at that point. Because they never have to take responsibility for anything. So it's comfortable. So you can... Yeah. And then? And then I do. And then? And then I don't feel bad anymore. And then? <laughs> okay, six know. weeks later, something else happens along the same lines? Oh, yeah. You're going back. You're going back. Until you get it right, you have to go back. But that's a horrible fight right there. Well, sure. That's the fight where... That's what I'm saying. How can you be comfortable? You said people are comfortable there. Because they don't have to be. Just be like me. <laughs> See, we always, we always got the excuse, you know. And here's what, here's what I tell people. You're the way you are because you want to be that way and you're too lazy to change it and you don't want to change. And if you don't want to change, that's fine. I'll still love you, but I don't have to like you. Amen. If you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. That's up to you, but you're still going to be in the flesh and you're not going to get what God has for you. You're not going to grow to the place God wants you to grow because you don't want to. So you're going to be in this stage most of your life. Wah, 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 eh, eh. And that's the way it's going to be. Amen. And then when the reverend comes up and pulls the thing out of your mouth, ah! Wow. You've got my binky. I'll get your binky. Are you having fun yet? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Just, well, that's their comfort zone. They don't like change. Yeah. Yeah. So they are comfortable. I don't, I don't Even comfortable feels kind of, kind of good. I mean, learned otherwise. comforter feels, but I, I don't know that, well, maybe I'm just speaking for myself. I can't feel comfortable <coughs> there. Where? In that baby, I can't feel comfortable there. Really? And why do we do this? Because you practice it. Practice it. And habit. It, it's easy for us to stay here because then you don't have to change. Yeah. Every, every sh in, in psychology, there's, there's, a, there's a statement that he gave me, and I didn't agree with it at first, but I do now. And he said, everybody hates change every time. Even a good change, you're going to hate it because it's going to be uncomfortable for you, okay? 
And, and you know, uh, Paul wrote in Ephesians, for instance, grow up, grow up, put away this. You, you need to do this and all those things. But, but you know, I can look at people and I can, I can tell you about how old you are in Jesus. If you don't want to know, don't ask me. <laughs> but I'll tell you. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little discouraged, to be honest with you, or disappointed is a better word, because I see you, and then I see you don't do anything with it. You sit over here because that's where you are, because that's comfortable for you. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's why you're there. Well, I'm not there. Oh, yeah, you are. Well, who do you think you are? I'm the shepherd. <laughs> I know my sheep. That's why I got, I could always get me one of them, their shepherd staffs that could reach, bam, could reach out about the third row. You could probably make me one, Rick. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, sure, absolutely. Crook, then I can take him off the, you know, whatever. <laughs> It's, it's like the pre the, this, this preacher one time was fed up with one of his deacons and he just couldn't take it anymore. He called up his deacon and he said, I know I'm in the flesh and I know I'm in the flesh and there's no doubt about it. I've had it with you. I'm coming over there. I'm going to beat your lights out and I know I'm in the flesh and I'm going to repent later. <laughs> See? Now watch. People don't understand that they're not in ministry. <laughs> My old pastor told me this. He said, the only people that understand why Moses struck the rock are preachers. That really understand why he struck that rock. And he did in the flesh, but we understand why he struck that rock, you know. So God wants us to grow. So in order to grow, he says, walk in the spirit. Now that's a fun thing. Walk in the spirit. In the Greek, I won't go into all those Greek stuff. I don't want to try and impress you because I can't be impressed anyway. Anyway, to, to walk in the spirit, uh, some, some people use it as almost stroll through life. Stroll through life. Now think about this. Strolling through life without a care, without a problem, without any sense of anything. Huh? In the baby stage. No, it's not. Strolling through life without a care? With faith. No, as a Christian, you're strolling through, you're walking the spirit. It's it's when you when you walk in the spirit, nothing's gonna affect you, nothing's gonna bother you. You just enjoy life. You're just having a good time. Things going off around you. It doesn't bother you. You don't care. You're walking in the spirit. Someone gets upset. Oh, that's the way it goes. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're just having a good time. Nothing upsets you. Nothing gets to you. You're walking in the spirit. Not fulfilling less the flesh, okay? And, and most of the time, the reason we, we walk in the flesh is because we want to get our own way. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't argue with you. There's no sense in arguing. I'm always right. <laughs> so if if we if we if we learn to get this walk in the spirit let me give you a clue Jesus said my words of spirit their life walk in the spirit walk in the word period anything outside of that's in the flesh and walking in the Word will get you out of your comfort zone. Because what will happen is you'll start making decisions based on your feelings or your history, your emotions. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This is where most people in the body of Christ are. And... There, there's, a, there's, I, there's, there's a few scriptures in the word that to me are frightening scriptures. One of them is, the spirit of the Lord departed Saul. He didn't know it. And he didn't know it. That's frightening to me. Yeah, because there's no turning that around. No. No, no, you, 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 it's over. 
Yeah. That's yeah. Sad. Absolutely. So that's in the Bible, by the way, folks. Yeah, Same Bible has John 3.16, has that in it too. Which also has this in it. Oh, there's a there's a fun one. And and how many how many Christians today believe lies? Yeah, and and you present the truth to them. In fact, I remember Sarah, it was really funny. Um, mm, remember Tom Allen? Yes. Kind of okay. He came out to. He was from a, a particular denomination, Christian, uh, particular denominational church in that area. Went there for years, and uh, somehow he ended up at log cabin, and uh, sat in the back, and I preached on something on. It's not important what I preached on as such, you know. And then the Satan just got up and left. I don't know, a month later, I think it was, he came back, sat back in the back room. <coughs> we sat there for a while and listened. Got on the service, and he came up after the service. He said, you know, I've never heard anything like this. Now think about this. <coughs> Two services, been raised in church all his life, and he said he never heard anything like that. It's because most people go to church and what they hear is going to take care of this part. Yeah. It's going to make them feel good. So what are they preaching out of if that's the case? Pardon? What are they preaching out of if that's the case? The Bible. The I, can, I can take a Bible and make a flesh sermon out of it. I know it, right up here. I know it. All her life, she. I know. Well, Lonnie's family, that they, well, she used to be out there, you know. It's and and churches are full of people, and this is one of the real things that I have is how do we get to these people to let them know that hey, you're in trouble and you don't even know it. Yes, ma'am. Well, see, and the Bible talks about that. They said you got, and use the phrase silly women, run around looking for places so that have itching ears, you know, and you can find somebody to scratch your back for you in church. He won't make you mad because he makes you mad to leave. He won't get your money. That's, that's, that's one of my, if I can use the term lightly, burdens is how do we reach people? But most people, okay, let, let me ask, okay, why do people go to church? Why? Change. Yep. Get your, get your star, you know. Yeah. You what? Come to church. I have a way to prison. I look for change. Which my grandma Della said, I need change. And she said, meet me here on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I started. And I got I 360 right there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, see, that's what the Holy Ghost will do. Yes. Hey, mm-hmm. yeah. Give you, a light. you know, I, I, I've used this before, and it, it's very sad, but it's very true. Uh, a particular church in uh, a town near here, full gospel church, full gospel church, Fellow stands up and at the end of the service said, anybody need prayer? And this fellow gets up and he says, I need prayer. I'm addicted to drugs. And he says, all right, brother. He says, go ahead, sit down. We'll pray for you. Mm-hmm. Now, see, you're used to me. Yeah. But that's the way they did things. Mm. I just kind of make you see this. The whole world is just so much deception. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like people don't know this, and I think it's important to know this, is um, 
everything is based, should be based on the Word of God, period, okay? My whole attitude about ministry, I try and have a foundation on God's Word, period, okay? If thus saith the Lord, that subject is over. I don't care if you like it, believe it, receive it or not, it's over. And I ain't changing it, okay? And, and people don't like that in me. <laughs> You're too black and white. Yeah, me and Jesus. <laughs> so, so, yeah, he was. He's more black and white than I am, man. I'll tell you right now. He, I, I, I use this terminology, and I, I'm sad to say it. If Jesus showed up today and started preaching, he'd probably get crucified by the church. Because they wouldn't like what he's, he's telling them. Yeah. So if, if, if we understand then that it's, it's the Word of God which is going to change us because if, if, you know, you eat spirit, you, okay, you eat breakfast, you eat lunch, you eat dinner, you eat snacks, whatever, you know, and then that food is assimilated in you, okay, and then certain nutrients sometimes are taken out of it, <laughs> are taken out of this food and your body assimilates it, uses what it needs and gets rid of the rest, right? And, and, most of us don't recognize that that is food. You don't think of it that way because you think of it as a book. See, here it's a book, here it's food. You got to get out of the book and get in the food. All right? And, and it's difficult to do that because why? Well, we're just too busy. So we, I'm going to have a fit of carnality. <laughs> so to walk in the spirit then is to be, I like, okay, don't get nervous. You can get nervous. Carefree. I like that. Carefree. Walking in the spirit. Ah, oh, it's raining. Yeah. It's snowing, eh, sun shining, eh. Nothing makes a difference. Amen. Nothing changes what this says. See, that's the whole thing. Nothing, everything else can change, but this can't. God's word is forever, the Bible says. His word is forever settled. That's what it says. Amen. I am the Lord, I change not. So whatever changes is going around, so what? Shouldn't have any effect. It shouldn't have any effect. Yes, ma'am? I can tell you one thing. After going to those other churches, coming here was kind of scary. I talked to you about that. I know. Gee, I grew a beard and everything. She just said I was scary. I don't think I'm scary. I'm not scary. No. Are you insinuating that I I'm always trying to make you guys feel I'm always trying. He's <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really funny because uh, when I was a policeman, one of the things I had was really wonderful is I was a born again, spiritual, blood washed, blood bought child of God. And uh, I tried to walk in the spirit as a cop, policeman. That's why I never got mad at people. I may have to wrestle them or throw them on the ground or something like that. But, yeah. Well, you should have paid attention. 
What do you mean you don't want to get in the car? <laughs> I had a lady one time. I like little humorous stories. I had a lady one time that um, it was... Uh, you know, nowadays, uh, we have several agencies that have lots of police officers. When I was in the business, you were the man. And backup was a long ways away. <laughs> and so you are pretty much on your own. If you got in a jam, have fun, you know. And uh, this, this, this I, I just pulled over this lady and uh, pulled over and it was pretty close to where a bar was and uh, ran her through a test. She, you know, ran her through a test. She flunked. And so I was going to arrest her and put her in jail. Just as I said, you're under arrest, the bar closes. And here comes all the bar crowd out. And I said, ma'am, you're under arrest for driving on the influence. And she looks over and sees all these people and she starts screaming. So here I am standing here. Here she is standing here, screaming, crying like a banshee. And here's all the bar crowd. Like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank God for the Holy Ghost, because we just got over the fact that you can't take me to jail because I'm a woman. <laughs> well, there, there's a theory you can't take a woman alone, you know. Well, yeah, there are procedures. There are procedures you do, you know. Get in the car, you know. You call him mileage, time, and all. Anyway, I said, well, yeah, you're going. And so she starts screaming, here comes the bar crowd. And I look at them and I looked at her and I thought, hmm. And I got right up in her face. I said, ma'am, I said, you have the right to remain silent. I suggest you do so. Get in the car. That anointing was on me yeah. too. You know. And Holy Ghost has saved me a whole bunch of times, I'm telling you, because I, I was kicking rocks. <laughs> so if, 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 if we learn to walk in the spirit, you can do that on your job. You can do that, you know, your day to day, you can do it in school, you can do it anywhere, you know, but you've got to train, you've got to train your spirit too. You've got to learn to recognize the voice of the spirit. And, and one of the best ways to really develop here is to pray in the Holy Ghost a lot. Even when you don't think about it, pray in the Holy Ghost. Like the preacher said, pray to your purple. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So if we walk in the spirit, it can be a time of, of peace. It can be tranquility. It can be joy. You know, oh, my goodness gracious, this disease is happening. Or this, everybody's going bankrupt. Or what are we going to do if this happens? I don't care. I don't care. Exactly. Ain't going to affect me. See, here's the deal. It ain't going to affect me. The problem is we think it is going to affect me. And when you think it's going to affect me, this ain't going to work for you. Because you are in control of you. Jesus said something really fun. He said a lot of things really fun. He said this, for instance, as is your faith, so be it unto you. As is your faith, so be it unto you. Amen. Amen. And you can walk on someone else's for a while, but there's a place where to come. I remember several years ago, my daughter, my oldest daughter, Tabitha, uh, we were getting ready, for, getting ready for school one morning. And uh, she said, Dad, I got, you know, the flu or something. Would you pray for me? I said, sure. Huh? So she came over and I went to lay hands on her and said, and God told me. He said, don't pray for her. I said, what? <laughs> See, you better be paying attention here when you start getting stuff like that. Was that the devil? See, you got to know the different voices. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Most people don't know the difference. Because they practice too much in the flesh anyway, so that's the only voice they're comfortable with. Anyway, moving right along. So I said, I, I, thought, I thought, what? So we had this quick, and, and conversation with the Lord are really fun. It, it's almost like you get, it, get the whole thing instantaneously. You know, it's not like early on, sometimes like a type, you know, a page. But this, it's a bang. You get the whole picture. It's a boom like that. And, and, and he told me, he said, she's raised up right. You taught her right. She knows how. Have her believe me for herself. 
And that's exactly what I told her. She said, what? I said, you heard me. That's what God said. Okay. She's fine. Come on now. I was, I was told another time to, pray, uh, to not pray for a lady. No, excuse me. I was not told not to pray for her. I was told not to pray for her healing. The Lord told me she's done with her work. She's tired. She wants to come home. Let her go. Now that gets in the area of tough stuff. Okay? Uh, a fellow that, that tried to die at my house one time, a Woody, he tried to die at my house. I didn't let him. And he ended up in the hospital. And the Lord, he, he, was, he was on machines and stuff. And he said, he's done. Let him go. The Lord told me, let him go. Me, let him go. Why? Because I was keeping him here. This is grown-up stuff, folks. This isn't any namby-pamby, let's go to Sunday school and make dolls. Uh-uh. This is life stuff. Okay? And, and, and when you, when you, and you, and you don't get that way tomorrow. You get that way through practice. And listening and obeying, recognizing, doing the Word of God. And not backing down. See, Anything you compromise to keep, you're going to lose anyway, so why compromise it in the first place? That's just a fact. You can go down and, and you can prove it to yourself true. You've compromised certain people during the years and tried to hold on to them, tried, and you still end up losing them. So just start at the front. Hey, this is the way it is. You're going to lose them. Yeah, you're going to lose them anyway. And if God's in it, maybe that gives a God a chance to slap them a little bit and get to their attention, you know. Walk in the Spirit. Amen. Stroll. I like that word. Stroll in the Spirit. What you doing? I'm strolling in the Spirit. Amen. That beats. Yeah. That beats. <laughs> well, you're still in the Spirit. It's just a different one. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Somebody stole my tail. We went to Disney World. We went to Disney World and Eeyore actually said to me, he said, you do better Eeyore than I do. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, Lord, any, any questions or thoughts on this? I didn't want to get into the next section yet, next part. Yes, ma'am. Our children, are we holding on to them too tight? Sometimes, sometimes. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an interesting quandary that happens. Some people, for instance, you, you may get the thought, well, I'll just turn them over to God. Yeah. You might be turning them over to the devil. Yeah. That's why you've got to know, okay? There's, there's a, a time to hang on and a time to let go. You and, but you've got to know the difference. Okay, for instance, if I if if uh, say I was talking to one of my kids and I say, okay, this is what I want you to do. Da 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 da. They don't do it. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Da 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 da. They don't do it. All right, do this. Da 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 da. No, I ain't gonna do it. Do this. I ain't gonna do it. taking care of the other four kids. And see, the devil will do that to you. He'll, he'll, keep you, he'll keep you busy with somebody whining and moaning and groaning all the time. Yes, it is. Yeah, absolutely. See, if you, if, if you give rid of that emotional part, how would you deal with that person if you really didn't know that person? See, my, my children don't have any closer access to me than anybody else does because they're my child 
they may be able to get to me easier for some reason or another. Maybe they know where I am. But as far as, uh, for instance, I won't make a decision about my child that I wouldn't make for you. It wouldn't be a different decision. If the same circumstances were there, I'd make the same decision for one of my blood kids as I would for a Christian. I wouldn't make a difference. I wouldn't allow my kids to do stuff. I don't want you to do stuff. Amen. Because the same thing is still at stake. It's no difference. It's no difference. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus did that. He treated everybody, guess what? The same. Amen. Now, he taught groups different, but he treated everybody the same. You going to do this? Fine. Not? That's fine. That's the way it is. Okay? So walk in the Spirit. Stroll in the Spirit. And do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let me give you, uh, I'm ahead of myself, but I wanted to read it to you because it's really good. Rick Renner is an amazing guy. Um, he has a, come on, where is it? The, uh, the, he, he calls it his Renner Interpretive Vision uh, Version, R-I-V. Okay, this is his translation of, of 516. Make the path of the Spirit the place where you habitually live and walk. Become so comfortable on this spiritual path that you learn to leisurely and peacefully stroll along in that realm. Living your life in this spirit realm is the best way to guarantee that you will not allow the yearnings of your flesh to creep out and fulfill themselves. Amen. Isn't that good? I like this. Become so comfortable on this spiritual path that you learn to leisurely and peacefully stroll along in that realm. Amen. You have no worries, you have no cares. Do you ever think about why you worry? You worry because you can't do anything about it, so you worry. That's logic. Because that's why you're worried, you can't do anything. That's why Jesus said, cast all the whole of your cares upon him because he cares for you. But then we go pick them up again when we see it. And then you wonder, well, why doesn't it work? It did. <laughs> did you know that this series of lessons, we're talking about bringing Jesus back? Did you know that? In there? da 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 Da, 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 da. A six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope. Nice try though. You gotta do it quick. <laughs> my spirit was willing, but my flesh wouldn't wanna do it. C two. 